Hi. Do you believe that children are being raped, murdered, and eaten in a suburb of London called Hampstead? If so, you might find that sometimes you have trouble getting that message across to people who don't believe in it. So I'm here today to tell you a few tricks and tips on how to make sure that you can convey that important message. Stick around because I've got plenty of tips coming up right now. Let's say, for argument's sake, that you believe that there's a cult in Hampstead which imports babies. What the police say is only useful so long as it supports your belief. By DHL brings them to a church and ver various different schools in Hampstead. <laughs> Hundreds of adults meet to not only murder and consume those babies, but also to rape children using plastic dildos, which are made in the fathers of the father of the two main children in the cult, the two specialist of the special children in the cult. And they're made in different colors, by the way, just so that you can tell the, the rank and social standing of, of the person using the different dildos. And that these people, once they have murdered and eaten the babies, skin them, turn their skin into shoes, tie their skulls around their waists and shoulders and all sorts of things, and then they dance. And they don't dance to music, though. They just freeform it. So you believe all of that. That's great. Cool. Wonderful. Now, the first thing that you're going to have trouble with is explaining to people why they do this. Now, I think one of the things that you need to remember is that this is part of a worldwide phenomenon. Don't forget to say that because that really puts it in perspective. If you can cite credible sources, like for instance, David Icke, who believes that lizard people rule the world from the wrong side of the moon, which they have hollowed out and that the moon is actually a base for kind of hiding, like hiding all the lizard people so that before they come and go and, you know, that sort of thing. Anyway, David Icke is your man, okay? He's he's kind of the one of the guys behind this whole, you know, lizard people are owning the world and raping all the children thing. Now, why do they need to rape children? This is the question because they don't seem to actually derive any particular satisfaction from it if they're just doing it using dildos. I mean, really, what's the point of that? But why they do this is that they get power from the children's fear. Okay, all right. You really need to hone your audience and consider who you're speaking to. These are people, let's hope, who have not had a great deal of education they may be a little bit gullible, but that's perfect. That is exactly what you want, okay? They may be gullible, but that means that they're gonna be open to your message, and your message is important. So you've got this whole wacky, insane story, and you really need to sell it. So the first thing you need to do is you need to discredit the people who are trying to tell people that the story is false, okay? Now, it might be really obvious that the story is false, but that doesn't matter not your not your problem your problem is making sure that no one believes anyone who says that the story is false okay think about names that you want to call these disbelievers don't just call them disbelievers that really kind of sounds and that's a little bit kind of late 18th century what you really want to call them is satanic or you can call them um, you can say that they work for a government agency. That's always good because everyone knows that if you work for a government agency, then you're against the people. That is a well-known fact of science, okay? And your friends and followers are going to totally buy that. So the first time you see anyone trying to refute your arguments online, what you have to say is you've got to point to that person and say, you you are a bad, bad person. You work for, now this is going to depend on the country you live in, CIA, the FBI, GCHQ if you're in, if you're in the UK, um, the RCMP or CSIS if you're in Canada, 
Um, what, what else? MI5, MI6, those are possible. Um, Mossad, if you happen to think that the person is also a Zionist. And if they're a Zionist, bonus, bonus, because that means that you can get them on two things, being Jewish and eating babies. So anytime you see anyone referring to this thing as a hoax or as fake or the people who are promoting it as criminals, you just give them what for. Okay, you know what the great thing about it is? They cannot disprove it. There is no way that someone can disprove something that you call them. If you say you're a pedophile, well, how are they going to disprove that? The, the pedophile thing is important because it's a word, I know it's got a lot of syllables, and some people don't necessarily know completely what it means, but if you throw it around like confetti, it's going to make them look bad, which is kind of the point. Next step is to start actually not knowing anything about the hoax, really. Okay? Don't worry about the details. The details are not important. Okay, so for example, if someone who looks like Angela Power Disney says to you, okay, doctors examined those children and found that they had signs of sexual abuse, you just take, take it for granted that that is the truth, because why would she lie to you? Honestly, she has no reason to lie to you, right? Okay, so... The other thing is, don't even look at the actual medical report because it'll just confuse you. What you need to do, don't look at the medical report. Confusing, too many facts, too much medical jargon. No one's going to understand it. The fact that the doctor said that only one of the children showed signs after a second examination, not your problem. You don't need to worry about that. At one point, she said that it could be consistent with some form of sexual abuse. That's all you need to know. The fact that the little girl was a virgin, the fact that one of the children had no signs of anything wrong, the fact that their problems could have been attributed to enemas, which their mother was known to give them, not an issue, okay? Don't even mention it, because if you mention it, it'll make people think, and if people think, that's when you get into trouble. Do not mention the medical stuff, unless it's to say, just in passing, okay, don't get into the details, just in passing, say, okay, the doctor said that they had been sexually abused. Okay, so you're stretching the truth a little tiny bit, but who cares? right? It's for a bigger cause. This is for the cause of whatever the cause is that you happen to be promoting. Some of you might be promoting your own Christian ministry, for example. And what you don't need really is people asking awkward questions. So ignore that kind of thing. Do not mention the fact that the doctor retracted her statement when it was actually reviewed by other doctors who basically said, what the f*** are you talking about? So just don't even get into that because it's just confusing. You don't want to confuse people. This is my, my basic message here. Do not confuse your audience with facts. Very, very important. Don't confuse them. Okay, so the medical stuff, we'll get that out of the way. Now, what about the business about the children came home covered in bruises, the little girl's forehead was, you know, like black and blue in, in the photographs that were taken and the videos that were taken on the way home, and she had like a giant, you know, mark on her chin, red mark of a, like a healing cut or burn or something. Don't mention that. Don't mention the fact that they looked skinny and undernourished, don't mention the fact that they looked exhausted. Any of that stuff, that's not your problem. Again, do, this is my message. Do not borrow trouble, okay? It's not your problem if those kids were physically abused, okay? Sure, they were tortured, but it was for a good cause. And that good cause is making sure that an entire community is put under the gun and 
terrified of anything that you might do or say about them and that the father of the children never sees them again. Okay, so that didn't work so well. All right, I admit it was kind of a bust. But that was the point of the whole thing, that there was like, there were issues, okay? And it didn't always come out exactly as expected. That's why it's important for you as a messenger of whatever the thing is that you're trying to message, that you don't look at the facts too carefully, or if you do look at the facts, don't tell them to anybody, okay? No one needs to know. It's our little secret. Okay. Now that you've basically laid the groundwork and you've told people children are being no make sure you don't say this in the past tense okay it's very important make sure make it immediate make people feel make people feel the urgency of this thing don't say something like oh well they were being abused say they are being abused very very important get that straight okay now another thing that you'll need to think about that some of the people are going to try to you know lay on the doorstep of the of the two poor poor mother and her boyfriend who risked everything to get those children back to the UK and then they were planning to leave again but you know that's not your problem either don't say anything about this okay this is between you me and the gatepost don't mention that neighbors had been reporting the little people the little children sitting out on the doorstep in their underwear crying you know, in the cold. Don't mention that because that's just, you know, bad form, okay? Also, here's a, here's a big one that I want you to keep under your hats, under your hats, okay? Don't say anything about Abraham's criminal record. Now, granted, he does have a criminal record that dates back to his teenage years, starting with weapons offenses, moving up through things like theft, um, with weapons and and there were various drugs offenses but I mean who cares about those really because drugs schmugs whatever don't mention that he spent time in a Spanish prison do not talk about that okay first of all it upsets Abraham secondly it's not relevant so what so he had citations for for beating his own children and his stepchildren pay no attention to that that is not relevant okay none of that is relevant to the cause at hand you need to keep your eye on the prize eyes on the prize keep that in mind don't forget very very important when people ask you why do you care so much about this you need to look them in the eye and say don't you care about children Everyone cares about children, right? I mean, that's, it's just a thing, right? Everyone does. So if you accuse someone of not caring about, a ch about children, then you're accusing them of possibly being on the other side and they do not want to be there. Believe you me. They do not want to be on the side of the satanic, evil GCHQ, MI5, MI6, Mossad, FBI, CIA, RCMP, CSIS, uh, CSE, all of those people, they don't want to be on that side. They want to be on the side of goodness and rightness. Okay, got it? Right. Okay, so what else can I tell you here? Um, yeah, don't think about, for example, the fact that the mother in an interview with um, a guy named Nathan Stoltman, who is on your side, believe you me, he's one of the guys, he's one of the good ones. Okay, so fine, he looks a little bit spaced out a lot of the time, and his he looks like his cat probably has a higher IQ than he does. Never mind, not important, okay? He broadcasts from his father's garage, and he is broadcasting the truth. Not the truth, the truth. Those are two separate words, okay? Just so you know. He had an interview with Ella. And when they were off camera, she mentioned to him that she had been mistaken about part of what the children said, okay? She had been mistaken that her eldest son 
and his father and his father's new wife had been members of the cult. Okay? Don't say that she said that. That is a really big absolute no-no. Absolute. Do not. Okay? Zip it. Because if you say that, it raises all sorts of uncomfortable questions, such as, if she said that, then why did the children in their videos say that those people had been involved? And why did Abraham go into like great and gory detail about it in the Jean Clement video? Okay, we don't want to know about that. No, don't talk about it. Okay, just keep it to yourself. Understand that in this fight, which you are fighting, and you are responsible for making sure that other people know about, that when you do that, you understand that certain facts will have to be suppressed for the good of your thing, whatever it happens to be. Okay? And I don't want to presume what your thing happens to be. Maybe you're a preacher. Maybe you just feel like making videos and, and maybe getting monetizing those videos so you want to do something that's going to get a lot of clicks that's a good thing to do right you know i mean free enterprise right maybe you're selling fake energy machines from a place in morocco that we won't discuss um and maybe it's inconvenient for you to have people asking uncomfortable questions um when you have already made friends with Abraham Christie and are, seem to be kind of delivering his message for him. So you don't really, there's, there's just a lot of things that you just don't want to get into. Okay. Right. So stick with me. I know where the pitfalls are. I understand where, where you can go wrong. And I understand what you need to do to ensure that you just don't fall off the ledge and actually accidentally wind up telling the truth. Okay, important stuff, right. Okay, so tattoos, let's talk about tattoos. The thing that you do not want to say is that Abraham said that the tattoos were meaningless. Don't mention that he said that in the Jean Clément audio. That's neither here nor there, not your problem again. Like you just have to think, some things are my problem. Some things aren't my problem. Okay? This is, falls into the category of not your problem. Not your problem that Abraham said to his brother-in-law, Jean Clément, who was recording their conversation, that the tattoos were not important and that they could have come from anywhere. Okay? Because later on, it occurred to him that maybe the tattoo should be important because it was something, again, that thing I was saying about you can't prove a negative. The people that he accused of having the tattoos would be in a bind because no matter what they did, he would be able to say, oh, well, you faked it. Okay, so they show him, they show, I don't know, on camera, let's say, or they go to a doctor or they go to the police, they show that they don't have tattoos the doctor or the police say these people don't have tattoos all you have to do is say well that was faked simple gone okay um or they could even in public go on instagram or go on youtube and pull down their pants and say look no tattoos well it doesn't matter because maybe they had them removed i mean there's many many ways to disprove any kind of defense they could put up. So please don't worry about that, okay? There's just no way for them to defend against it. It's just, it's just not a thing, not something you need to worry about. Again, as I say, not your problem. What about the fact that the children made retractions to the police? Well, that's simple, really simple. All you have to do is say that the police mind controlled them. Obviously. Come on, use your noggin. Use your head for something other than a hat rack. Seriously, people. You just have to think about, think creatively. 
you have to say if the children retracted to the police first of all the police had to help them retract by saying you're not going to get in trouble if you tell the truth now that sounds like an innocent thing to say but really it was a code word that set them off and their um, ingrained hypnotic post-hypnotic suggestion thingy um, and that made them say Abraham made me lie don't let anyone tell you that those children retracted the, the statements okay and if they try to tell you just skip over it and say look the police forced them to say those things you can tell because the police are like you know moving their hands and he crosses his legs at one point that's clearly a Masonic gesture designed to tell the children you have to say what I told you to say. Look, okay, maybe that sounds stupid. Maybe it does, but think of your audience. Come on, think with me, Peter. Work with me here, people. Work with me, work with me, okay? All right, so you've got the children, the ch you've got the children's retractions taken care of, you've got the tattoos taken care of, you've got the fact that the mother was having problems taking care of her children taken care of, you've got Abraham's um, criminal record taken care of. What else is there? Oh yes, the medical reports that we're just not going to discuss. There's so many aspects to this thing and people could come back to you, yes, and they could say, you know, well, what about this or what about that? Well, that is nitpicking, okay? That's nitpicking and they're lying because, come on, say it with me, say it with me, because they're Satanists or pedophiles or GCHQ or MI5 or MI6 or FBI or CIA, any of those things, okay? So just keep that in mind. That is your that is your go-to response anytime anyone tries to refute what you are saying. Very important to keep that in mind. All right? Also, these gestures that I'm making to you, these are satanic gestures. Just thought you should know that. Need to recognize them when you see them. Mm -hmm. Noggin. Keep your noggin working. Of course... One of the very first things that people are going to say is, well, you know, how do you know that this happened? And your obvious answer is, well, videos the children made, they could not possibly have known what they knew unless they had experienced it. Well, the videos are your first line of defense. The children, repeat after me, the children could not possibly have known what they did without having experienced it. Write that down and refer to it as necessary. Keep in mind, people are going to say to you, well, what about this or that or the other thing? The little boy saying that he could ejaculate, you know, um, a whole liter of fluid at a time. And that we all know that even an adult can't do that. How is that even possible? Well, he just remembered wrong, okay? He got a few details wrong, right? Okay. What about, for example, the little girl saying babies were hung up with ordinary kitchen string on cup hooks when we know that the weight of a baby would break a piece of string and a cup hook is not going to support the weight of a baby, okay? We know those things. Doesn't matter. That doesn't matter. Those are details. The children do talk about they do sex to us. They say that repeatedly. They don't explain what it meant, but that again comes under the heading of not your problem. Okay. Are you getting the drift? You getting the point here? Okay. There's lots of things that just are not your problem. What about the people who say well, but the, but the mother and the boyfriend went to the police straight away to tell them about all of this. And then you're going to get those like nattering nabobs of 
negativity who say, oh, no, they did not. And they're going to say things like, oh, yeah, you know, the police went, the police went and had to go to them. And, and they only got talked to by the police because uh, Jean Clement took the audios to them and, and the police were concerned and then came knocking on their doors. Oh, big deal. Okay? Oh, big deal. It's not the issue. It's very, very, very clear that they were set up by the police. Okay? Not that the police interviewed the children and the children told them things that didn't check out when they went to investigate. You know, and then they basically said, well, clearly this case is a load of bullshit. <laughs> so what? Okay? So what? That's the police. You know the police are going to do that. What the police say is only useful so long as it supports your belief. The second the police go outside of what you believe in, they are the enemy. Keep that in your mind, okay? Lots. I know there's lots to remember. And to be really good at this, you have to kind of fudge over and, and just gloss over certain things and pretend that they didn't happen. But that's okay. I have faith that you can do this. You are a dedicated trooper. Okay? You know what's what. You know what to ignore. And you know what's not your problem. Okay? And when people tell you things that get in the way of what you want others to believe, all you have to do is call them the, the dreaded names, as we've discussed. It's really not that difficult. Just stick to your script, keep saying the same things over and over as loudly as possible, and you'll be golden. Because, I mean, it's a pretty simple mandate, honestly. Ignore the, the details that contradict what you believe, Forget about the truth, stick to your message, and remember what is and is not your problem. Okay? So that's it for me for now, and I'll see you next time. Okay.